Hi, my name is Rich. I use the he, him pronouns, and you're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop role-playing games with friends. This is the Intercontinental Group of Awesome, so named because we span a couple of continents in a giant ocean. We get together on Sundays and we play cool games together, and we're happy to share them with you. This is a game in our Power Beyond Doubt series. Power Beyond Doubt is a grown-up superheroes PBTA game designed by none other than Jen, who is with us. That's right. We have the game's designer in the group. It's coolest. She has deigned to allow me to run the game, and I'm happy to do so. We create a bit of an interesting, well, not a bit of a, we have created an interesting setting to tell our super stories. The Atlantica City short version is that is sometime in the not so distant past, a number of aliens received the call from Voyager and all the other spacefaring excursions and transmissions that we from Earth have sent out over the last hundred years. And they came here to say hello. Uh, when they arrived, the lost city of Atlantis revealed that it was not so lost. And the Atlanteans, who were subterranean or water folk, thought that it might be good if Earth was represented by more than just the humanity that was polluting their environment, et cetera, et cetera. Miami, uh, which is a city in Florida, is where the aliens first came. And now that city has been renamed to Atlantica City. It hosts not only the welcoming center for the galaxy, uh, in the Kennedy Terrestrialization Office, but also small enclaves of aliens, such as those who live in Little Mars. And there is a contingent of Atlanteans who have come to the surface, albeit the most public of them are the, uh, is, is Makeda, the ex-ruler of Atlantis, who was deposed by the Atlantean and Makeda's loyal followers who on the streets are known as the Atlantean Mafia. Not, not too nicely called the Atlantean Mafia. She, she is not seen as a of otherwise benevolent ruler and uh, is the Atlantean is one of the celebrated heroes of our setting. Z comes from uh, Atlantis and is... Yeah, I think I think we were like we're thinking serial action figures, animated show about the Atlantean teaching people about Earth friendly practices, maybe a little Captain Planety and some of the vibes of the Atlantean animated series. But the Atlantean herself is a bona fide, pretty legit hero, has no skeletons in her closet or the like. But we're not telling the story of the Atlantean. We're telling the story of Hearn and the Hunters, as the media has started to call you. Not problematic at all. I thought it was Atlantica Hunters. Just I it's according to if you like one rags is Atlantica Hunters, others have said Hearn and the Hunters. There's nothing's coalesced maybe if you guys declared yourselves a thing that might change but for now the media is running with it with headlines such as dr null defeated by hern and hunters uh, and that's that's good stuff in last session dr null the aforementioned genius inventor tried to uh, use these things he called his bug bots to overtake Atlantica City's one of their main bridges. And you guys not only defeated the bug bots, but Hearn knocked Dr. Null possibly into orbit. We're not sure, but he is definitely <laughs> sure not appearing in this game for a while, most likely. Uh, but we also had 
mentioned that Blossom had an appointment with Dr. Handsome, and that is why she had not joined you. So let's remind everyone that we do use safety tools here. We have lines and veils. Line is a line we do not cross. It's not interesting to us for this story. Veils are things that we're okay if it exists, but we are not interested in spotlighting it. So if it does occur, then we will mention it, fade to black, cut away, move on. And then ask first are things that are very situational, meaning if you are interested in exploring that as a topic or an idea or a response, please talk to us out of character about it before you bring it into the fiction. And then layered on top of that, we have the open door policy as well as X card, which means, hey, I didn't realize that this will bother me, but it's harshing my fun. Please, I will need to X card this thing and then we will excise it from our play. No fuss, no muss. Let's go around the horn and quickly introduce our players and characters before we jump into our story. Let's start from the left-hand side of the character keeper, heading towards the right. So Sabine, you're up. Yep. Hi, I'm Sabine. I use any pronouns. I am going to play Oscuro. Our uh, Monday name is Miguel Morales. He uses the Avenger playbook. And um, he was a basically a pretty famous and uh, successful rock music mu musician. It's punk, metal, folk, folk mix anyway. Uh, until one day at the ultimate concert of the world, the world tour, um, the the mastermind, the uh, mind control, a person with mind control powers, took over the audience and made them go to a nearby museum, engage with a heavy duty security system that was not meant to just stop 20,000 people from paging through and um, yeah, robbing it and leaving a lot of dead and other injured and uh, affected people in, it, in its wake. So uh, he has now um, sworn or has on the mission to find out who the mastermind is and answer for what they did to, uh, well, to a shit ton of people. So, yep. Thank you, Sabine. Alex, you're up next. Hi, I'm Alex. I use he, him, and I'm playing Blossom, who uses she, her. She is the giant plant lady who didn't used to be a giant plant lady and would kind of like to return to that. Um, she wasn't here last time because she had an appointment um, with the, an awkward appointment with the government doctor, Dr. Hanson at the Kennedy Terrestrial Center. Because, you know, she has all this alien biosphere thing in her that means she's now seven, eight foot tall. I'm not sure her height, but large and wide. She's, she's a big girl. She's got friend handles. That's, that's how I always think of her size. Thank you very much, Alex. Next up, Tyler. Hi there, I'm Tyler. He, he him pronouns, and I am playing Dr. Maxwell Mannheim. Also, Hearn the Hunter, because poor Maxwell uh, is inhabited by the demigod, the mystical being Hearn the Hunter. Um, the two of them share the body with separate consciousnesses. Um, uh, Maxwell transforms into a giant muscle bound uh, paragon playbook, big, super strong flying guy. Um, there is constant struggle between them to kind of be who's in control, though I think slowly but surely we're seeing a, a medium come between them, a kind of kind of melding of the two. We will see how that progresses. But poor old Maxwell is having to keep his secret identity while also harnessing the vengeful, violent, and... Uh, not to mure in any way, her the hunter. Thank you, Tyler. 
last but not least, our games designer, the wonderful now embedded, meaning that her bed is connected and she's mostly moved in, is Jen. I put myself at 50%. I'm still using my little box for desk setup. Moved in ish. Okay. Moved in ish. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a photo of, uh, of my desk setup and show that off to y'all for your entertainment. But uh, I'm Jen. I use she, her pronouns. I am playing as Theo, AKA Shanak, who also uses she, her pronouns. Uh, Theo has some cool, fun fox themed powers and is sort of a, a legacy heroine who has inherited the powers from a down from a family line. So, you know, if she gets into big trouble, she could maybe go and ask her auntie what, uh, what she would have done, but you know, that might look too much like failure. So, uh, so that's, it's a last resort kind of thing. But otherwise, let's see. Yep, cool senses, has more of a, it tries to have more of a balanced down to earth approach to doing the heroism. Um, has a, and it's complicated named Rory McLeod. And, and currently has a, a bit of a rivalry with Oscuro that Oscuro probably doesn't even notice, but it's fine. It's all fine. Rivalry with Oscuro that Oscuro doesn't notice. That's not a very good rivalry. You need to work on your rivaling skills. I, I apparently do. I just, I don't, I never actually want to make Oscuro frustrated. Oscuro needs to start pissing me off, damn it. Uh, <laughs> I can try, but I'll have you know that he's frustrated most of the time anyway, so. Uh, see, just by you, uh, that's not even fun anymore. That's that's like putting a hat on a hat. It's what are, it's are, are, are you saying you can't make me more frustrated than I already am? So are you giving Is up this challenge? easily? Are you giving up this easily? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now I've got to. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. I'm feeling better. Excellent. Uh, we begin at the Kennedy Terrestrialization Center where we see Blossom. I think, yeah, I think we see Blossom in a very a small, this is a specialized office, but a small waiting room mm -hmm. awaiting her appointment. And there are, other than the woman behind glass, who is the administrator, there are two people in the waiting room. One is a young Quigan, uh, alien girl uh, with scaled green skin. Uh, she's you can tell she's pretending to read a magazine because it is upside down, Blossom. Yeah. She's just turning it. She keeps looking at you. And whenever you look over, she, bam, she's back to the magazine. Like, oh, it's very interesting, whatever thing she has just looked at. Yeah. Uh, the other person who is here, I'll show you a picture because it, it's a thousand words. You know is a, a super powered individual by the name of the Neutron Fist. Uh, the Neutron Fist, these, these fists don't go off. Uh, so he sits with his elbows here and he can clasp his hand, he can touch his own hands. He can even touch his face, but at, at one point, if he were to touch anything else, it would not go well for that thing. Uh, the, the powers of a neutron star in his hands is the uh, flavor text for Neutron Fist. I think this is the first time that he's come here. 
that you know of for the first time that his appointments here align with when mm -hmm. you are in the waiting room. Do you know of Neutron Fist as a superhero? Or is what you're familiar about I, I his think, history as a supervillain? I think superhero, I think I've seen him out. I, th I think I've seen him like take down big robot monsters, you know, things like that, you know, drop in. A hostage negotiation, negotiation, hostage situation by you know grabbing the gun and the gun just from their hands and stuff like that. It's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's always seemed kind of he's on camera at least. He seemed like he's having a good time. I don't know if I'm getting that vibe in here though. Not at all. He yeah. looks very forlorn uh he has his hands clasped together and his elbows on his knees and after a few minutes of you noticing this queek and is watching you without watching you he says i've seen you before haven't i on tv probably i've Got on a little bit of press recently. Uh, same with you've done some good work. I've, I've, I've seen it. Thank you. They uh, they're working on some gloves. Yeah, uh, I kind of just gestured my hands, like I mean. At least I don't need gloves. No offense. Sorry. That, that was, sorry. I'll shut up. No, no, it's okay. I can talk about it. They, um, I had a nurse for a while, but then I didn't exactly work out. It's It's a lot to ask of somebody to feed you and all that, you know? Yeah. Are you seeing Dr. Hanson as well? Yeah, he thinks there's some kind of suppressant, something he could generate. There's some research he's done. At least that's what they told me around alien materials, null metal, something along those lines. Mm. Just hope it's not another, another dead end, you know? Mm. Anyway, I just wanted to say, doing good work. And I know what it's like for people to look at you differently and to come out and be a hero anyway. I mean, what else are you gonna do? So uh, we can't exactly do the nine to five, can we? <laughs> no. No. Door opens up and a nurse sticks her head out. Blossom, where Dr. Handsome is ready for you. Yeah, give me one second. I think as I'm leaving, I'm like, if you ever need to talk, just Give him a nod and I go, it's just, my appointment. Yeah, well, my, uh, my phone's hands-free, luckily. Yeah, I have, I have fun with phones as well. <laughs> See you around, Blossom. Yeah. Then you head into the room and the hallway. You head into the, the back. The hallway is very bright, all clinical, stark whites everywhere. And uh, then you come into the room where we we quickly like see blossom in one of the gowns right yeah. like they've got an oversized gown for you what are the what's the fanciful kid like uh designs that are on your oh. gown i think it's little sunflowers with faces on nice on like on blue 
yellow yeah oh that's great that's great yeah dr handsome comes in immediately like walks in with clipboard we fast forwarded past whatever a nurse oh, yeah. checking vitals all that mm -hmm. stuff he just comes in flips a couple of pages now if mechanically if we recall you've lost your touchstone with dr handsome mm -hmm. but it's easy enough to reconnect and this scene could easily be a setup for that so i just want to highlight that as a, as a possibility so so uh, glad to see you made your appointment blossom welcome back how have you sure. been feeling lately um, i mean okay i there was one change i and i i think i'm i reach my hand out slightly and just like look at i don't know his coffee cup or try and like grab it with vines to bring to my hand cool cool I, I think this feels tense enough that I'd like to see you wield your powers because yeah. uh, you know <laughs> could be amusing if you go I've learned a new thing destroy coffee cup with powers yeah I think that's uh, okay I need to find the uh, it's in top of basic moves the rolling group there it is it um, is this two seconds when you wield that. your powers with purpose to shift the situation uh, or to shift the situation, uh, roll with power. And this is a confidence aligned move. Your confidence is one, your power is one. So 2d6 plus two. I can't possibly go wrong on this. I love how you cue the things. <laughs> um, I can't possibly go wrong. No way at all. It appears that you have rolled a six. The good news is that that does, if I recall, earn you an XP. So please do. I, I get to level up. Oh my, you level up. So yes, I try and grab the cup and gently bring it to my hands with my dainty fingers and my full control over my abilities. And what instead in front of the handsome Dr. Handsome. <laughs> in front of handsome Dr. Handsome. Instead, what you do is is the the vine like slithers around a couple of times. You're very careful. We see a panel of like close-up intense concentration blossom face. And then uh there's like a, a, a wobble, like a little motion uh you know, lines on the sides of the thing. And oh, that's true. Let me pause. I can't you could have stone. used a different touchstone to boost this roll by one. You can't use handsome because he's not reestablished a touchstone, but if, if there are other things you could use as a touchstone potentially. So just pause. There's a mm. someone mentioned the possibility of a touchstone being used here. Nana Bebe. Uh, I, Ula, yeah, I mean, I was that was the one that's trained with Miguel to be, learn that yes, power. Exactly. Well, that's cool. But then you don't level. But then it's I don't true. level, then and you, don't you know level. how much I like a miss. <laughs> I think you, there's an image as it starts to wobble. Oh. You think of Miguel, but no, you can do this on your own, Blossom. Yeah, you know what the power is inside you. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm confident. I'm you know I've got this. Nice. You know, you bring the cup over mm -hmm. and then sp promptly spill it all over Doctor Handsome. And uh, was this was this a joke? I, 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 it's I'm very sorry. funny, Blossom. It's very. I'm sorry. I need to go and change. Everything is fine. Every your your charts are all fine. I and he gets up and he. I was. He walks out. You see it's, the the coffee cups like slowly you know spilling out there's coffee on the floor there maybe it's chipped uh tyler what was on the coffee cup like what was the the cutesy saying that dr handsome had on his coffee club cup which he loved and is now broken dr feel good <laughs> That's delightful. 
Dr. Feel Good Coffee Cup is is broken. I, think I, it, I, I feel like the frustration. I think she has enough frustration of like previous things that have been happening and everything that I pick up like just something, nothing particularly big, nothing particularly offensive, and kind of just like throw it with. If I was a normal person, it would satisfyingly just maybe crack against the wall, not cracking the wall, but just cracking the thing and it would fall to the ground and then I'd feel ashamed, uh, but with a lot more velocity than a normal person could manage. So it like, <laughs> it goes through the wall. Uh, I don't know, multiple walls, I don't know. Like, but <laughs> you throw yeah. something through a couple walls. Uh, has anyone got a suggestion of something smaller than a bowling ball in the doctor's office that would just instantly smash against the wall? Oh, man. Trying to think. Maybe the jar that there are a bunch of tongue depressors in. Mm-hmm. The jar of lollipops. Oh, a jar of lollipops even better. Yeah, yeah. Duh. I'm looking through my fingers at the hole through. And I think you uh, lose that one confidence. Your confidence goes back down to zero. Uh, soon after last, well, you, you're heading out mm-hmm. and maybe focused on the embarrassment of before. Yeah. So it's like the elevator before you realize that that Quigan had, had evidently been waiting and then followed you to the elevator. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, in the elevator, I don't even notice she's in there with me. For a while she's she's like five a little like five two five three so you're you've got at least almost two feet on her she's tiny she comes mm-hmm. like her head comes what belly button level for you something along those lines yeah it's part car- of the rib cage yeah it's crazy uh oh. gre- greetings blossom oh I, I thought i was alone uh, hi um Hello, I am Ozzel Croxeldis. I am uh, from Quiga. Ozzel? Yes. Uh, hi. Um, hello. Uh, her, when she blinks, her lids, the lids of her eyes actually have, like there's a soft slap sound when... She closes her eyes. Uh, she blinks as she looks up at you with her large, uh, non-irised yellow eyes that are very alien. She says, it is, it is wondrous to meet you. I, I put out my hand to like, you know, hello, Greek. And she reaches up and your hand is like, you know, it's like this, but she reaches her hand and just runs it along your forearm reverently i mean i i find it odd but i you know i hang out in little mars different greetings and you know body language and stuff is you know um uh have, have we met no we we have yet to meet until this moment and that is why this moment is so very precious. Uh, same. Um, I understand that you are seeking the help of the human doctor here, and I respect that. But if ever I could worship the ecosystem that exists with inside you, I would offer you assistance as well. There is much I know about parts of you. Um, 
Do you, I, um, I'm like back against the door. Trying Boom. to like. The door opens up. A couple of people get inside. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they look yeah, up like, and they're like, one person steps back into the hallway again. Then the person's like trapped inside and looks back hatefully at this stranger who just abandoned them to the two weirdos. But it is the Kindy Industrial Terrestrialization Office, so they're not that freaked out. Yeah. Uh, but well, maybe that feels awkward for you. Uzzle ignores this. You see what has transformed your body holds the ecosystem of my planet, which is no more because our sun went supernova. Uh, um, I mean, I mean that's that's really, really, really sad and horrible. But um, I, I can have things to do, and um, I'm sure you understand. Um, so I, I, I'm just, uh, and I, I think I'm literally just kind of I open up the elevator door and step out and <laughs> close it again. <laughs> I don't wait for it to open up on itself. I just, yes. so there's a slight fingerprint dent as I push it back together again. Awesome. That sounds terrible for you, but also amazing. And yeah, uh, you leave Ozzel Krauxist. Uh, I said it right, and now I'm going to mess it up every other time. Uh, but Krauxist, this. Uh, you leave her behind, and she looks slightly disappointed and we hear the click clack of her eyes blinking as she considers her next move so after the last session our wishes just as a reminder uh, we had wishes which were expressed training with blue orchid and tony which i would love for that to be a coming up scene uh conversations with mateo uh and uh also the realization that miguel and mateo would be happy to speak in Spanish, we'll definitely have that. Uh, some more team scenes, possibly a guitar battle, and uh, love and rival stuff. Yeah. So, uh, do we want to have Blossom join the crew in your? conversation after the big fight at the bridge or do we want to skip a little bit of time to have the training sequence i mean what? we literally start with a scene that we just blossoms like wow okay you had a busy afternoon and then just i like that i like that so where do we want to set this with blossom catching up with the crew after your successful yeah. mission defeating dr null And she yeah. wasn't in, in, invited to the bodega. Oh, sorry, Tyler. Go ahead. I was going to say we have just been to mm -hmm. to there. I, I don't know if we would have shot a message. I mean, that would maybe have... maybe we're on a, a nearby public beach. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that sounds fun. Yeah. Cool. So we skip ahead, you guys, after the bodega. Unfortunately, Blue Orchid is not with you because he you know, skipped a few classes of school and then he goes back to finish his chem labs. Uh, and yeah, Blossom, you, you come up, they've just described to you defeating these bug bots and um, bug bots. it sounds pretty impressive. Wow. Uh, an inter... Oh, is it Hearn or Maxwell at the moment? I think it's Maxwell. We're on a beach in daylight. I think Hearn's probably yeah. away. So much sun. Yeah. And Hearn, like, into, just into the clouds or into space? He, he sort of booted it uh, like, a, like a football up into, uh, well, far, far away. I, I have a feeling, perhaps, that uh, Null escaped, but... Uh, it was quite an impressive kick. It's, it's, it sounds it. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, Harn, Harn also held together the snapping cables of this bridge, just yeah, oh. kept it from collapsing under our feet until Shanak could uh, weld them together. Very quick thinking, Shanak. Well, sometimes the tools are right there. Definitely would have gone a little faster with you here, Dawson, but. I understand yeah, so. that you were at the doctor? Yeah, yeah. Um, How did that go? It, it went out quite okay. Just the just normal, usual checkup. Everything fine. Good to hear. Do you know of um, what was the super. Uh... The neutron fist. I will stick him in NPCs now that he's been introduced. Any of you had to like team up with um, a neutron fist? No, I don't think I have. Huh. Oh. Oh, no reason. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of him. Well, he seems like a seems like a pretty good A or B class hero, you know? Yeah, he, he seems nice. Did he work for some villain before hearing out? I'm not sure. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. We all make mistakes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Well, and, and, yeah, I I, would, I'm just curious. I would like to unmask Blossom right now because she's behaving like... Totally, very squirrely. Oh, so Even good. for her. Yeah, mm. hit it. Unmask someone. When you pierce someone's mask to see the person beneath, roll with humanity. This is a trust aligned move. So, Oscuro, you are rolling with a minus one. Oh, it's going to be. Oh my, that appears to be a three. She throws you into the moon. Uh, um, that is a three, but I still get, I'm the master of observation. So oh, so you still get a question. question. Yeah, yeah. And then I deal with my failure. Um, but unmask someone. Uh, 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 question is, uh, hmm. How could I get your character to uh, open up to everybody? Like, how would I make you tell us what's really going on? To everyone or just open up? <laughs> no, well, it's based, let's start with opening up and, and leave to whom um, kind of thing. Um, I feel. It's a more, I think, a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Mm. I think mm. it's not something she would share with the group. Mm. Okay. Cool. Yeah, also failed. Yeah. You did indeed giving me a move. How delightful. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, delicious, delicious moves. Whatever shall I do? Quickly bring up the power beyond doubt to remind myself of what DMC moves are and feel terrible about not having already opened that because I should have it. Blossom's whirlwind of emotions is at your disposal. I'm going to take away a team. Ooh, okay. I don't, I don't have a team, so. Oh, no. What happens if I would take away a team and there is no team? I have a team. Nah. Yeah, but you didn't fail at all. I don't think that's fair. Uh, Oh man, I'm gonna push you closer to advance by taking away another trust. Yeah, that was a trust the line roll move. Yeah, I think I've in all the ten sessions I've never had a positive one of these things. Never, not once. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. The 
Don't you have a thing that allows you to make a negative a positive or something? Yeah, yeah I do. I it's do. confidence though. Okay, not trust. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I keep hitting that one. Maybe it's something else I could do, but I'm going to ride with that, but think of other ways that to react with, with future misses. So yeah, Blo you get that vibe from Blossom that she's just not going to open up in front of the group. And uh, yeah, here's here's my like fictional react to a thing so that I could say, what do you do? Do you guys get a group text from Blue Orchid that says uh, heavy metal guitar girl has demons at school? I just look up immediately. I'm like, that sounds bad. That doesn't sound great. Um, I think I will I think school? go and check this out. Yeah, because guitar demons sounds like kind of like my wheelhouse, right? Do you need a hand? Um, I think I'll be fine. Thank you. All right, you've got our number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll call if something comes up. So as MC, uh, let me I, step I, in. I will, Is there I, any one PC who I'd love to have Miguel not go off solo? If possible, I'd love to have at least I, one. I would like to text Theo. Um, like, be, that's the reason why I wouldn't want want uh. to take her because I want her to get go at Blossom because I've been doing so much with Blossom and we always drag. We switch up down. the mix. Yeah, switch yeah. up the mix yeah. up. That sounds good. And I think Miguel has like, okay, now she's going to be sad at me, and then I'm going to be sad at her, and that is a vicious cycle, and we need to break this. So he'll um, get out his phone when he's um, uh, maybe you look at maybe I can Maxwell can come. Yeah, I was going to say as you perhaps uh, I can provide a more low key sort of observation around as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, when we were around the corner, I text Theo, hey, there's something up with Blossom. She won't up in front of the group. Um, can I maybe talk to her? Sounds good. I'll uh, skipping stones in the yep. Sort of. And I'll step up to Blossom and say, "Hey, do you, you want to walk back to the city with me?" Sure. Yeah. All right. We see the two of you walking along the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. There's a moment when some people like give you wide berth because of Blossom. You know, this one guy was like checking his phone and he's about to walk directly into you, Blossom. What do you do? I, I think Blossom is quite often like hyper aware of moving through crowds because of, you know. Um, I think there's like she does like a just a <clears throat> as like a little bit before the guy walks into her. She's gonna announce her presence and kind of slows her step a little bit. It's best not to do sudden sideways movements and and Theo will step people. in and be like, eyes front, fella. Oh, uh, oh sh uh sorry, plant lady. Go back to your own planet. He moves around. You hear like a, a creak of a, a fist kind of squeezing. And then relax. Oh, what a dick. No effort to conceal what I'm saying. He's, he's already got you both on ignore mode as he's walked past. Yep. I think he's the like flip-flops and board shorts and an A-shirt kind of guy. Mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. though he doesn't have the guns to support an A-shirt. I mean, it's hot. It you hot. need to expose your arms. That's just how it is. It's true. Sun's out, guns out. <sighs> is this true? Is this true for Theo? Oh, yeah. Nice. Yep. 
even though uh, even though I have to put on a lot of sunscreen. Oh yeah, I Theo guess Theo burns real bad. I was about to say that where Theo Theo's people uh, burn. Yep. yep, she's got the long freckles that uh, that poke up in the summer, and yep. Hey, Theo, you notice that someone's following you? Small green, like five foot two, five foot three green mm -hmm. alien mm -hmm. creature person. Mm -hmm. Humanoid. They're not disguising it very well, but trying to. Right. And I'll roll into a conversation. It sounded like uh, it sounded like something happened at your doctor's appointment. Uh, well, I tried to use my powers. Uh, I was going to show off to Dr. Handsome and end up breaking a cup and then threw a jar of sweets through two walls. Two Don't walls? No thin walls. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, that, I mean, there was a, this guy, kind of, you know, sad puppy dies. And... Neutron fist? Yeah, yeah. Um, he, you know, you know, he had this kind of, You know, same problems, you know. He, he gets the kind of not all superpowers are sunshine and roses. Yeah. All the time and, you know, he was, you know. I think it's good for you both to have somebody to talk to. Yeah. yeah he was kind of cute. Oh, you like you like the puppies? Well, it's, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Miguel, he's pretty handsome, but, you know, he's not exactly puppy dog. Not exactly. He's no. he's hurting in a different way. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, relationships, it tends to stick to, you know, those in the business. I don't think I could. I don't think anyone in, you know, civilian life would, you know, this. My hand gesture to my body. Well, I think there's more non civilian life out there than you think. Mm. Superhero mm. activity generates a, a wide periphery. But it's easy to ignore. Yeah. <sighs> How would I mean? Uh, uh, no, I, well, how are you and Rory? Now that she know. She knows now, she and knows she was and... she was mad for a minute, and now she's she's not so mad. Not so mad. Not so mad. I, I, I got to finish explaining things to her. And, and then she realized, oh, I haven't been lying to her our whole lives. So, so that's a lot better. I've only been lying to her for a month. That's different. Uh, that's delayed truth. Delayed truth, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, not, that's not too bad. Right? It's not too bad. And we were apart. She was on a trip i couldn't have told her for at least the first couple of weeks anyways this podcast tried to intimidate her into giving my identity away which but she, but which she didn't one? oh it's oh super i think oh i've heard that one yeah they're twits but they're dangerous enough twits and i need to talk to them at some point real soon 
help them realize that maybe they shouldn't just bother ordinary people. Mm. So super. I mean, I could, if you want somebody to have a word with them who won't break their legs. <laughs> In my head, picturing Oscar or Hearn going to visit. <laughs> You know, I mean, I don't exactly have a secret identity to lose, so. Well, I was thinking of going as Shinnok and making some noises at them, but having somebody else with me would probably help sell it. I mean, my social calendar is not full. All right, let's do it. A fist to do the fist bump. Oh. I and she's she's very much learned to never do the. Yeah, she, you just she's, you just hold it fist. still. I, yep, yeah. yep. The only one I'll actually do the proper fist bump will be to her. Mm -hmm. There goes that. It's it's always softer than I expect. Sweet. Yeah, that patch. Mm -hmm. Oh no! If you no, if, no, I like the fist bump as a possible yeah, like capper. Yeah, no, that's a good the, although the always softer is, is a nice little reaction. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Uh, we, unless you guys wanted to have like a a rival scene, I'm thinking since if you respond back to Blue Orchid, he'll portal to you, pick you up, and bring you in because he's worried that this could you know. <laughs> the car drive over things could get worse so he would strongly recommend he yeah, portal I'm, you guys there That's i'm cool. busy texting theo so maxwell can you text mateo absolutely cool nice so moments later door opens up and he pokes his head through just just no offense but just the two of you, is everybody else okay? Yes, yes, I think it's just us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he <laughs> pulls you through. And I think as we, the, the panel of him sticking his head through, you see the high school grounds in the background, and we see the notes drawn in the comic page because the music is going. It's pretty loud, Miguel. What about this girl's music most impresses you um music. probably that it's rather original right i mean nice. it's a it will always impress me if people play their own stuff with confidence she's just playing the solo right in front of the high school it's pretty brazen i mean uh -huh. It's also a cry for attention, but still. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not like I haven't done that myself, so. It's true. It's true indeed. Cool. The I haven't conjured demons while doing it, but, you know. true. Demons, sound sprites, tomato, tomorrow. I, I'm not conjuring sound sprites when I was in school. <laughs> Just plain sprites, okay. Plain sprites. Yeah. That's right. Cool. So I don't think I shared the pick with Alex. So let me find it real quick. So I, I have to say this Alex art is not at his place. Though. Oh, that's right. That's what I get. We're trying to do the thing. It's okay. We will display that later. Two of you step through and it's it's chaotic it's a chaotic scene you see a young girl uh with a guitar the guitar looks new it looks nice it doesn't look second hand uh and she's got long black hair she's actually on dramatis persona of our npcs tab tanaka michiko uh but she's stands five seven five eight looks a little slight uh, Asian cast to her features, 
long dark hair with a few locks that have been dyed pink, wearing leather and black and a choker because that's rebellious. And she's playing this virtuoso performance. Uh, and you see that rising from and, and kind of chasing around a number of her classmates is this pink hued demonic head that's floating around. Um, and she's aware of that. It seems as if this is not girl who is accidentally doing a thing. Um, and you see, as you guys are first coming in, uh, Max, Maxwell and, and Miguel, that Tony um, has like come running out of school and she sees what's up and she like drops her backpack and she's going to run over and try to, she's not going to just punch the girl because it just seems a little dumb, but she's going to try to go get in her face. Uh, what do you do? Um, first off, as I, as I was coming in, I have texted uh, to, my, uh, to my friends at the Atlantica Research Society of, uh, of the Enigmatic, Ooh, um, yes. arse for short, um, that, uh, that this is going on. This is right up their alley. And, and they're not uh, that far away. Maybe they'll see the tail end of this. Mm -hmm. um, and as I see Tony coming, let's see. She knows me as that friendly old guy that kind of helped out. She doesn't know you as Hearn, though, right? Right. Exactly. Okay, just making sure. Uh. Oh, I suppose I do need to. Oh, I, yeah. It's been Thank a while. Thank you for that. It has been a while. Please roll. There's always a way. Oh, oh Always a way. Roll with power. I always fail. Oh, here we go. I got an eight. I didn't fail. You didn't fail. Seven to nine, you get to hold one. Uh, Fantasmic. Thank yay. you for the reminder, Sabine. So, um... I think I'm going to try and figure out what's going on. And I do have Case Sphere with me here. Of course. Uh, since he was with me at the beach, I wouldn't have just left him. Harv, harv. Um, so I think this seems like a good moment to assess the situation. That seems like what when you assess be. the situation, roll with genius. Mm, not my uh, and this is a confidence aligned move. So you're rolling flat. I'm rolling flat. Seven. Well, what do you know? Uh, with a seven to nine, you get to ask one question and take plus one while acting on the answers. Um, what here is the biggest threat? Take a look at what's going on. Uh, you see that this girl is summoning some kind of demon. It's harrying people. It's like chasing them around. But Maxwell, this ain't your first rodeo. And you realize that that demon hasn't actually hurt anybody. It's almost haunted house demon scary at this point. Like it's terrorizing people, which isn't good but it hasn't like bit someone's arm off or done anything malevolent. Mm -hmm. It just looks malevolent. So the answer to the question is the, the biggest threat is that there's a whole freaking super team who's just rolled in on this girl, harrying her classmates for as far as you can tell. Uh, with a very outlandish, rebellious, and mostly stupid act. So the biggest threat is you guys pounding this girl mm -hmm. uh, over a misunderstanding. Okay, and I'm going to pull off K-Sphere. Um, 
to unmask the girl with the guitar. How could I get her? How could I get you to stop? Nice. That's a really interesting question. I think what she wants is what this demonic figure is giving. She wants people to be afraid of her. She wants someone to see her, even if it's in a bad light. Does that make sense? So what? Yeah, that's what she, she wants attention. Yeah. So, and getting that might lead to her stopping. All right. Um, and I'm going to kind of yell towards Obscuro and uh, loud enough that Tony can hear. Um, and... No, no extreme violence, please, please. There's no one been hurt. There's no need for anyone to be hurt. Nice, nice. Cool. I think that you're trying to trick her really this isn't persuading her right you're just trying to trick her that you or, or am i missing misinterpreting the intention i'm really there? the intent here is to bet your obscuro and tony know not ah, to go okay. in there and cool, cool. punch her head off all right awesome awesome sorry the, the google assistant decided i was talking to it <laughs> that's wrong all right so, Oscuro, you hear Maxwell talk about, you know, hey, take it easy. Uh, Tony looks looks back at you for a second, and she, oh, that's the that's that nice that's that nice guy that helped me out with the thing. And she turns back and she reaches out and she grabs the uh, Makeda's, uh, not Makeda, sorry. She grabs her guitar. She's good, Tanaka's guitar. She's going to try to yank it away from her, thinking, oh yeah, if I stop the guitar, we're all good. Um, and that's when the guitar pulses with light and sends her flying back uh, about 15 feet. She slams into the ground, rolls a little bit, and Tanaka looks around, and then you see this pink nimbus around her eyes. She says, finally, finally, someone. Wang! And then this big long note comes out and we see if you've seen dr strange on demand it's like you see the music notes kind of come across in this arcane arc uh Oscuro, what do you what do you do i well i would have uh assessed or unmasked but uh, it's too late now everybody else has done that so Not everybody um, else just one person there are lots of questions that well, were asked yeah, could... i mean no i i think the situation has escalated a little so i think i need to engage her not in kind of combat but uh you know i can the thing is i cannot really i can engage her i mean i know a lot of shit a lot of music that she doesn't i will bet on that because I can't play my own stuff, but I can't play other people's stuff. So I'll get out my guitar, look at her, and just play a riff at her, not to hurt her or anything, but just to say, hey, you're not the only one here. We can fight or we can uh, jam, but it's your choice. And I'm trying to say that all that with the, with the riff that I'm playing myself. Cool. So musically, are you trying to... What, what do you want her to do? Because it sounds like I wasn't sure what you're saying. Like, I want to engage saying? with her, okay. with me. I mean, I want to have a sort of battle of the guitars, duo of the banjos, but that so are you is confronting not... her then? No, no, no. This is not a, this is a musical confrontation, which leads to some tension in the music, but not between the two participants. It's actually a jam. Okay. No, it's not. It's it's maybe like trying to outperform each other, sure. But this is not a this is not a fight of violence or dominance. This is more of like let's let's do music together. Look, I'm good at I'm good as well. So, are you as good as me? Show me. Well, she came here with a completely different purpose in mind. So I feel like if you want to mm -hmm. redirect her energies, yeah. that in a way you're mm -hmm. you're tricking her into a jam session. Yeah. Does that feel fair? Yeah, that feels fair. Okay. It's a trust line move, of course, but it's still fair. 
All right. Your trust is negative two mm -hmm. and you're yeah. rolling with genius, which is yeah. a one. So you're rolling yeah. just a negative one. It's fine. Oh. Yeah, that's a one. Okay. So you you roll a one. Go ahead, mm -hmm. take your XP. Mm -hmm. And I think what I'll do is push your trust down one more, which is good mm -hmm. in that that is going to force you to a reset. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a hard move. I like it that. It does give me a hard move. Uh, cool. cool. So uh, I will ask you after this about how you will rebalance mm -hmm. yourself from this or how you plan to and then you can take either one xp or one team as a result but first uh you play mm -hmm. and there's some magic to your music even if you're not pulling out the sound sprites you're you're miguel you're a skiro you're the yeah. arcane batman with a guitar i am putting some magic into the music actually so she Beautiful. can see it perfect Tanaka sees that and then that demon just focuses wholly on you and it grows larger and comes tearing towards you and knocks you to the ground okay. uh, and it's gone from just trying to scare people Maxwell to yeah, I'm going to do harm to this threat. Uh, so, yeah, the, it's like big open maw. Uh, and you can see through it, but there's this weird like pink nimbus that feels like a, a yawning portal to the abyss. Mm, nice. Thank you. Uh, and Blue Orchid is right there. Like, do, do, I, do I try to tackle this thing or do I try to pull a skewer away <laughs> he's not entirely sure what to do so i'm curious maxwell what do you do well i uh i mean i deal in folklore that's what i'm good at um i think i'm going to move forward and attempt to bind the demon well that is a pretty cool thing to do. I think that you are wielding powers then, are you not? I, I, I suppose, I guess, I don't know if it falls into my power range. Or confronting. Yeah, I think Maybe it's confronting. Confronting feels more like what you're doing. Roll with daring plus confidence, which for you is you're rolling plus three. Oh I am quite daring. But you're not overconfident. This is the perfect potential move for you. I got a 12. So, Dean, it's just not fair to see this many rolls and someone else rolls a 12, is it? It's just... It's fine. It's not <laughs> fair. On a 10 plus, you get to choose two of the options from confrontation. All right. I think I'm going to create an opening um, there for, for my allies, maybe holding it up. And I'm going to impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Interesting. What is it about your, your men or your approach in this moment as normally mild-mannered Maxwell that makes you impressive to this this sound demon. I, I think it is the sound of my voice being commanding and certain as I'm calling upon these incantations. And I, I really think that it is the, the commanding sound of my voice. Nice. The demonic head pulls back. And it looks between you, Oscuro, someone with magic akin to it, to you, Maxwell, 
this before person that it would ignore to now person who had who can play on a level playing field and it says good good impressive now we will dance and uh hmm. tanaka she she uh sorry yeah i did say it right uh she starts to play more and you see that now the guitar seems to be a little more in charge as this thing is readying itself for an actual fight. Oscuro, what do you do? Um, if it's readying itself for a fight, well, I mean, it's a sound demon. I've got sound spirits. I feel we are pretty much in the same same category i will just try to i mean i'll engage the sound spirits with the sound demon not in the physical world so um on, on the other hand no no that's that's too simple that's no i'm i'm not quite as much as that what i will do is to take my sound spirits and, and impede the guitar impede the guitar sounds take away their ability to create sounds and the guitars because I'm pretty sure that that is what controls the demon, the guitar and the sounds, and not going for the demons. Easy that, that I can. I will go for the guitar and hope that helps uh, and before the demon eats Maxwell. Uh, cool. I will, I will uh, tell uh, Blue Orchid, like, if he can't do anything to protect Maxwell, I'd be, that would be, might be necessary. Yeah. He'll do his best. He he will try to protect Maxwell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, and then I'll try to take out the guitar. And I'm Sweet. wielding my powers, I guess. Exactly. I was about to say, it sounds like you're wielding your powers. But before we do that, let mm-hmm. me ask, because uh, I, I said I was and I didn't circle back around. How have you rebalanced yourself? I'm playing music. There we go. I, I mean, like this is, that is that is the, the the easiest way for myself to get that. I'm, I'm playing music that relaxes me like a lot. Cool. Um, see how that goes. It's an eleven. See, I can roll well. Wow, that is delightful. This is the first time I think I've rolled it over a ten been a while it mm-hmm. has been a while so mm-hmm. when you roll a 10 plus you get to choose two of the options for the move mm-hmm. let me see with your powers oh i think yeah i think i will neutralize the threat from the guitar right mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. seems like that that's what i was quite kind of doing Create something useful from your environment. Take hold of something vulnerable to you. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm also taking hold of the this guitar sounds. Right, I'm taking hold of that. You are not. You're not doing anything here. Cool. Mm-hmm. So, just so I'm clear, you like grab the guitar? Is that what? No, no. It's just. Okay. It's, I'm, I'm just playing at the guitar. It's the sound okay. spirits who grab the guitar and make it. All right. Like sweet, it. sweet. And so, mutant it. Is that a word? What's the What's the active verb? I'm not sure. For you would mute it. Just oh, mute, right? oh, okay. oh, yes. Cool, cool. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I could not possibly say it in German, so don't ever worry about that. Uh, so you neutralize the the guitar. The demon starts to dissipate. Like it's become a little bit more transparent. The music stops as the sound spirits grab it away. Uh, Blue Orchid is standing like slightly in front of you, Maxwell, but he's trying not to block you. It's just more like, I'm here to, I'm here to take whatever is about to come this way. And Tony rushes up and she, she clocks Tanaka. Like, she's like, oh man, you don't have your guitar anymore. It's not super strength. It's more like a girl punch where she later like, like kind of twists her wrist a little bit, but she clocks Tanaka Maxwell, 
what is the thing that you say that ends the this demon's connection to the plane and brings this fight to a close for now? The music has stopped and it is time for you to pay the piper. I love it. We have reached the staple, uh, the midpoint of of this issue. So we will take a bio break and be right back. Okay, Uh, let's let's jump back over to Shinnok and Blossom. Because I want to see... What's the last thing that we did? We ended that scene and that was pretty well. So that, that ended pretty well. I don't want to circle back to exactly that scene. But you were going to talk to So Super. Yeah. So that sounds fun. I'm imagining that the So Super podcast, and friends, I'll tell you that this is heavily influenced by me recently listening to episodes of the podcast, uh, the Marvel's Squirrel Girl Unbeatable Radio Hour which is delightful. And I highly recommend you check it out. It is free to download and very funny. Uh, but I, I like the idea that So Super is not a, it's not on the college radio, but is run by a bunch of college kids with more time than sense and technical skills and abilities that they don't use productively unless you call this this un let's unmask all the supers and follow them obsessively uh a productive use of their time so yeah we'll get you on campus as shinok do you think that you just circle back through rory and rory hooked you up with where she went for the interview do you think that's how you guys end up here or something else Hmm. I mean, either I circled back through Rory or I went through some of my acting school contacts. Because mm. I am going to this college too. That is true. I am also a student. And Blossom has been. And Blossom has been. So she's probably... Uh, quite familiar with these quads and dorms and so forth. Okay. So let's say then that we'll give Blossom a little bit of a little bit of the uh, paint the scene. What, What Blossom is the dorm the rumor about the dorm where you guys are headed, where you know that uh, Willard Ramsey, who I'll stick in the NPCs and regular folks, Willard Ramsey, uh, who is a definite driver and occasional voice, though he uses a pseudonym for some of the So Super segments. What's the rumor that you... I've heard about the dorms or the rumor on, on campus about the this particular dorm. Oh. Mm. My, uh, my brain is just going to really toxic, uh, um, you know, alpha, gamma, all those things. Um, uh, hmm. My I mean, brain maybe, is drawing a bit of a Maybe blank. they have a, a bit of a pranking t- tradition. You know, maybe mm. they've done stuff like put a put a professor's car on the roof, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. They yeah, definitely the kind of they've done the whole dismantling something like that's like to maybe putting somebody's car in a room, basically. They've dismantled oh, yeah. something. Oh yeah. You know, they've got some they've got some tech wizardry. And they've, you know, dismantled a professor's car and rebuilt it inside of their office or something. Showing my age, that gives me a very real genius vibe, and I am here for it. So mm. that's lovely. Thank you, both 
for <laughs> that brilliant image. Get up a couple flights of stairs. Uh, you probably get a few looks. Blossom, you're used to that, though. Yeah. And when you head down the hallway to get to Willard's room, I imagine someone recognizes you, Theo. Like, I'm imagining this is co-ed dorm, but divided by gender, divided by floors. Mm -hmm. So this is a guy's floor. Doors are all open as you're walking down a hallway on a uh, well-worn carpet, the industrial carpet that probably should be replaced. Various flavors of music playing out of each of the various of the different dorm rooms as you pass by, like mm. reggae, metal, K-pop. And one person's like, oh, it's D, what's up? And it's somebody who worked tech in a show that you were part of recently as, as a budding acting star. I, I give them the chin nod and a quick wave. And they're not going to hunt you down or anything along those lines. They're just doing the greeting. Yep, yep. And I have found a picture that tells me so much about Willard. Oh, boy. It makes me feel really good about my Googling skills, friends. So let me you see this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is a pic that's worth seeing. This this is great. This is this is this is so Willard. All right. So you knock on the door. It's one of the few doors that's uh, closed, and there's scribbled in Sharpie. Uh, Go away. On a piece of paper that he's just scotch taped up, and I assume one of you knock anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the person who answers the door. This is Willard. Look at that. That is a very punchable looking guy. I'm just saying, yep. not that I'm encouraging yep. violence, but that's, that's Willard Ramsey. So he opens the door up. <sighs> Great. What? Having a tough day in there? And you see that he's got like this nice rig and his computer. And you see that he's got some sound program going on. And he's got a, a mechanical arm holding a microphone and a green screen behind him. And it looks like he's got a solo room. And you set up a bunch of gear and tech stuff. And, and there's... Oh, I... Anyone can answer. What is some, a book that you see on his desk that is totally the douchebag college reader? Is it, is it like Mein Kampf or is it's it? It's the Fountainhead. The Fountainhead. There, there are like little tags sticking out of it and like four bookmarks. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And he says, uh, what? What do you want? I Blossom like, off to one side slightly, so not in the doorway when it's open. Right, it's like... I'm if a slight he's not, looming shadow out, up, slightly out of you. If he doesn't stick his head out the corner, yeah. he's like, oh, did, did one of my roommates put up a, a wall tapestry? Huh, okay. Just the brain goes, I don't know what that is, therefore it doesn't exist. Nice. So then he's... He, if it's just you, his reaction is a little, like a little less abrasive, and he says, "Who's asking?" Well, I'm. <clears throat> and I just shake my head. I I hold out a hand. My name's Theo Reganard. Um, okay. Blossom. And this is Blossom Baby. Okay. She's a friend of mine and a former student here. Former? Well, actually, are you still enrolled, Blossom? I'm sorry. I, I dropped out. Can we talk inside? I'm... 
There's not a whole lot of room in here. Thanks. And I, I, I duck down and I, I didn't push him out of the way, but you know, move it or lose it. He is not closing the door, which says a little something, I would imagine. What do you yeah. want? I haven't done anything on plant people. No. People. But you have bothered my girlfriend. Who's your girlfriend? Roy McLeod. She's about yay tall. Yeah, okay. White shank of hair, very cute. She's all right. It's not very exactly cute. my type. I give him a stare. It's okay. I've heard worse things from guys. Hey, listen. That interview happened and... uh, And it won't happen again, will it? Or what? He's just dumb enough to push it a little bit right now. I don't know. How popular are you on this floor, buddy? A reasonab- reasonably popular. Popular-ish. Blossom, what's your over-under on him having two friends on this floor? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, if he's got friends on this floor, they're not worth having. Ooh. A lot of crutch out stuff. I mean, Chuck over there is fine. So when Theo, when he moves over towards his computer, kind of just moves over to his computer like he sits, he sits his computer desk, but you see that he's he's trying to record this conversation. What do you do? I put my hand on his shoulder and I'm like, I'm not an idiot. I, I do know what Adobe Audition looks like. Okay, so we won't bother your girlfriend or whatever anymore. I mean, that was a dead end. Oh, you would not even know the downloads. It was like 15% lower than the piece we did on the Atlantean. So not really worth our time. And I don't want to hear about you coercing other students onto your show either. That's going to take, that's going to take a, I don't think you're tricking. I think you're being very direct with persuading him to stop this, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah, I'll I'll give his shoulder a very unfriendly squeeze and let my fists do the talking. Ooh, very cool. I don't have any intention of escaping from this conflict. Oh, nice. Maybe if I can help uh, with a. That. sure that's uh that is a teamwork move that is row 34 you describe how you're doing it and you roll with team Does this use up team or nope you just roll with it okay i pick up something expensive and hold it very gently examining it with my massive clumsy plant fingers hmm trying to think of some Tyler help me out what do you think is something a college guy as we've described Willard might hold precious that is not supers related because if he had such a thing he wouldn't have it on display and you don't have to so think of, it doesn't have to be something that I mean it could be an armchair <laughs> um Blossom's big enough to I would think it's probably like his signed photo of him and Rush Limbaugh arm in arm oh my god he just became so much worse. Arf. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. I shouldn't. I shouldn't overreact such. But. I mean, my 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 answer would have been his gaming console, but but I enjoy the idea of of this photograph framed it in tells so much delicate more. hands. Yep. Full of oh, flavor, barf flavor. Rolled. Yeah, and it's it sounded like with half our brains tied behind our back. 
Rush and Willard. Um, I got an eight for helping. Nice. All right, then uh, I think. Yep, I get a plus one to this roll. Okay. Which will be all of the bonus I get. Well, let's see how this goes. Here comes the roll. I'm gonna do it. All right, so that's a nine. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the touchstone on Rory to take this to a 10. Very wise use. On a 10 plus, they'll go along with you unless or until some factor action betray, betrays the reason you've given them. And you are not overburdened. So it just mm -hmm. goes something like, listen, don't, don't mess with that. He's dead now. That's, I'll never, I can't replace that. Whatever you guys want, it's, it's, it's fine. There are tons of supers in the city. I won't bother you guys or, or any more students because honestly, it's all about the high schools nowadays anyway, but most of the college I don't people want you bothering dropped high out school for, students either. Well, that's kind of gross, but they didn't come to us. So if they come to us for an interview or offer tips, I'm taking it. I'm sorry. You are, are the journalists. adult in the situation who must be responsible. Do you understand? Oh. Right. Yeah, totally. Listen, that's illegal. I'm not even interested in that. That's good to hear. That's really good to hear. And I'll like pat the sides of his arms as I back off from the desk. I'm glad we could have this little talk. I put the um, the picture, the framed picture, in his like on his lap, like against his chest, and then just like and just poke, push a finger slightly. Kind of. he, he takes quick stock to make sure that the photo is still in good condition. Did you do anything to it? No, but I think there's like a push, and he just slides back on his office chair it's a gaming chair slightly yeah just uh, like the chair a very, it's a very slow and it's a very it's a big finger so it's a large surface area so it just spreads the weight there's a creak of the frame okay we're we're cool message received sorry for bothering you all right have a good night and I'll step out. So let me ask you a question, Shana. Mm -hmm. You did very clearly declare that you are uh, digging in and committing <laughs> to this. No intention of this of a quarter, right? Were, were you leaning towards the possibility of making this guy one of your touchstones, or did I misread that? Oh, I was like, where's my, where's my decider? <laughs> Where is your decider in your new home? Here it is. Uh -huh. Within easy reach of, of my, my computer setup. Thank goodness. How it's else on, could you make one decisions? Of, one of the boxes in my box for it. But yeah, let's, let's make him one of my, my touchstones because that's funny. That is fun. And you could always drop him later if it turns out that he's not nearly as interesting as I have, I have a feeling he might be. Oh. Who knows? Maybe maybe he'll start getting exclusive scoops. Or maybe not. Maybe. We shall see. Perfect. You win. You succeed. I, I do. I, I leave and I'm like, well, that was great. <sighs> That's a weight off of my chest. Thank you. You think he'll live up to that? I think he'll think twice. We can always go again. Exactly. I can flatten his nose and feel like I warned him. So it's all good. 
Want to get some bubble tea? Oh, yeah. All right. Nice. So we, we cut to, I'm totally biting from um, my crazy ex-girlfriend, the, the bubble tea outdoor like, i imagine on campus there's a place that's like slightly shaded over a few trees and these little kind of patio style tables and basically a food truck slash trailer where they serve bubble tea and and boba and uh it's pretty popular mostly mostly girls here so it's it's pretty chill uh and that Quigan girl is there. She shows up soon after you guys are drinking. And Orders. I'll eye over there actually suddenly and go, so there's been a little green person following us around for most of today. This big? Oh, lower than the camera control. Yeah. Big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty short. Wow. Skinny. Scaly. That, okay, there was one other thing that happened at the at my appointment. They were like, I thought it was a fan, and now I think he might be a worshipper. Like, they said that, like, uh, you know, touch one of the flowers. Like, you know, well, this is what's left of their ecosystem or something of their planet. And oh, they... do you believe them? I don't. I mean, she seemed she seemed to believe it, but I mean, I'm just being gullible. But I don't know. I. I got a bit freaked out and I hope I didn't trap those people in that lift. What? Oh, I I I left the elevator um, a little bit early and then shut it. I don't think I broke the doors on my way out, but I didn't exactly no one from my insurance rank, so I think it was fine. I don't know, I freaked out. I was all, you know, the, the thing with it breaking the cup and then the handsome guy, and I was all a bit turned around. Sounds like it was a stressful visit, yeah. Okay. One thing today that I don't stick my fingers in my ears and ignore. This. I hold, I kind of scratch my eyes closed, wave, put my hand in the air and just kind of gesture, gesture for her to come over. She pops up, she's got the little bubble tea. Uh, <laughs> she ordered and she quickly comes over. Hello again, Blossom and Uh, uh, uh he Hello. It's, um, it's a pleasure to see you again. Th this, hi, hi, this is my, my friend Theo. Theo, this is... Ozzel! Um, Crowd 6. Hello, Ozzel. Yeah. Good to meet you. It's nice to meet you as well. Any friend of the Blossom... I, mean, so, I don't remember the rest of that phrase. It's a human is phrase. Is a friend of mine. Excellent. She pulls her sleeve back. She's got this like little wrist computer thing. She quickly taps a few things and you see these weird sigils and stuff as she transcribes that. So you came for the tea as well? I, I came to bask in your presence. But the tea is interesting. Little glance towards Theo with a kind of an edge of pleading. 
Tell me what this basking's all about. I don't, I don't really understand. I am, I am from Quiga. Our planet in the Quigan system, our star, like your sc- your sun, it went supernova. And the last bits of our ecosystem are one with the blossom. And do you want them back? (laughs) If only we had shown ourselves worthy of caring for such an ecosystem, perhaps, but as you see, we failed. But you, you are our last hope. That is why you are the blossom. You are sacred. Also, I don't think that it's uh, worth blaming yourselves if the sun went supernova. Oh, yes, you're probably right. Yes, thank you very much. That makes me feel wonderful. But still, all that we have left in our ecosystem is contained within you, and you are the caretaker of that. I mean, that is so very special. If I kind of like pull like a mushroom or whatever, something that looks equivalent to a mushroom, like, I mean, you could have this to regrow it, and then she reaches with trembling, tiny little scaled hands and holds it. So Just now you don't need me. It. You've got the mushroom. You hear um, the click, click of her eyelids as she blinks away tears. So to reiterate, now you don't need me because I mean, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just, just blossom, not the blossom. Just have blossom. I offended you? Have I offended the blossom? No, no, no. no. Um, of, of course not. No. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put a hand gently on Ozil's shoulder. If, if it doesn't seem threatening to her, I don't know too much about alien. She, she, like, gestures. she's meek. So, so you reach for her, and there's a moment where she like turns her face. She does, as I would then call I, the beaker, I, where it's like I'm gonna turn my face away a yep. little bit, but then, then but she doesn't. I, I stop and I I blade off, you know, uh, and go. Blossom lives under a lot of pressure. And And she doesn't like to impose on other people. Oh. Am I adding to your burdens, the Blossom? No, no. No, that's... I I, I, just... No. It's fine. What do you want to know? Do you need the space? The space? I'm the like space from others. Thing. Uh, yes. Uh, I kind of just, you know, my head bob starts to follow Theo's head bob. Uh, yes. Some I space. Will. Yes. Um, I will watch from afar. Don't do that instead. <laughs> what you should do is. Establish some boundaries, perhaps you two could meet and talk about your home planet and your ecosystem once a week, I kind of temperature test, or a month? Once a month? (laughs) Uh, And then you can... Be direct uh, it, that way. It, it seems like you're persuading her to yeah, I, I get think into so. this. So yeah, let and us I feel, see how this goes. I feel like even though I know role play wise, Theo's at the at the the lead of this speaking bit. But I don't know. Is that something that's that true? Theo I mean, roll or is this something you're the mouthpiece, but I think roll. it's Blossom. Does Blossom convince her? A- absolutely. Mm. You're very accurate now, in that. I want to help. 
Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Flat. Definitely help yeah. Them. Okay. But uh, I'm your friend. So here's. Oh, just gotta check one oh I got a. I got a three well, on trust that. Trust the Great. So that's good. <laughs> Humanity. Okay, so let's roll this. Oh, is that the help? <laughs> that's that's the help. I'm I'm doing a great job. Well, I'm helping. I'm see how much it affects my <sighs> six. <laughs> It it doesn't. If you fail to help, you simply fail. Okay. You don't, you don't take your friend with you. But uh, I get to I get I get an advance. You do get an advance. And me too. Hey. You also get an advance. The real ultimate. Oh, not an advance. I get the XP. Oh, okay. you get an XP. You get an advance. You just get an XP. A step closer to an advance. Mm. So, so in a month, I'll see you next. Uh, Ulu's. You will see me next in one month at Ulu's, yes. Thank you. I am, I am wor worshipful of your time, the Blossom, and this gift, which I will attempt to cultivate and grow, though the Soil here is so maybe next time you, you don't even need me, <laughs> you just you have the mushroom, and soon you'll have three mushrooms and four, five, and and, and the Omi have an appointment to the thing, so have a yes. fantastic day. And yes. Yes. And then I just turn around and start walking <laughs> briskly. Awesome. Oh, I did. mean, yeah. Ooh. She does not follow. Uh, she remains with her bubble tea for just a moment and then we'll scamper off to try to uh, plant this mushroom so that it will not wither. And you failed at your roll. I, I very so much it does. she's uh oh. Oh, it does die oh. soon after, which means that the ecology only lives on you, Blossom. Uh, rough and uh, yeah. Afterwards, Theo's just like, "Wow, that uh, that that happened." Does that happen often? I mean, I think, I mean, come to think, I mean, I, I get stairs, but I'm, you know, normally not in Little Mars, but I think I've seen green people staring at me before in Little Mars. But I don't know. I thought that was just the, you know, superb thing. Not the, the whatever no. this thing is. Uh. Uh. So we cut from that uncomfortable. Not the origins of pollinate. <laughs> oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, we cut to the aftermath of your showdown with Tanaka and her demonic guitar. Police arrive are going to be arriving. Um, we should maybe get the guitar out of circulation because the demon, I think, is bound to the guitar. I think you may be right. Huh. <clears throat> okay, I can try to grab it. I will. I mean, I know that it shocked Tony, but uh, maybe it won't shock me. It's still silent. So, do you feel it whispering into your mind? Oh, okay. Do you continue to try to pick it up? Yeah, yeah sure. Abel Telmax was trying to talk to me. That doesn't sound particularly good. No. Uh, professor? Uh, Tony says. Uh, um, yes, yes. Uh, 
what should what should I do with her? Uh, the police you, will you be arriving soon. You should restrain mm. her and have the police arrest her. I suppose. Unconscious. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Kind of. Yeah. Yes. Still so working maybe, on that. Maybe put her in the rescue position so she can breathe. Yeah. First aid stuff. Right. Um. Sorry. Are we sure. Are we sure? Like we want her to be arrested? Probably not. Well, I mean, uh, this disruption was probably caused by this item, but mm. the police are going to come. Everyone saw her. And the only other option would be perhaps running from the law. And maybe that is something that has been occurring a little too much. Uh, it seems as if you are persuading her not to, to, to do the right thing here. Mm -hmm. If this were her, she would not even question it. But it is the professor, so she's still questioning it just a little bit. All right, and that would be with humanity, which I've taken up, fortunately. Uh, so I'm rolling plus three. That's an 11. Yes, sir. Of course. Sorry. Just, you know. I will stay here and report what I've seen, and there were plenty of witnesses. I will take this guitar and um, have a look at it, I guess. And Blue Orchid, like, tries to drop his voice a couple of octaves and says, you did the right thing, uh, knocking her out and stuff, because she was threatening people. Good job. And he tries to offer Tony a high five. She looks at him. Gives him a high five. Oh, good. She didn't leave him hanging. <laughs> she did not. Tony's not the kind of person to leave someone hanging unless she can't help it. And then as the police are starting to arrive, I think Blue Orchid will say, I'll stay here and make sure they know everything that took place. Professor, if you need to return to your job at the college, of course you can. I, I, I'm happy to also give a statement. Excellent. And then he glances over at you, Miguel, to see and, and whispers in Spanish. Do you need to go? Do you need? Yeah, I want, don't want I, them to I have the guitar. We don't want them to have the guitar, and uh, they are not fans of Miguel Morales anyway, so I'm going. Well, they should learn. <laughs> I think Amoraz is not a fan of the cops either. I'll kind of give a nod. And I'm I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving okay. the scene. Yeah. With the guitar. With the guitar. Okay. You leave the scene with a guitar, and I think we bring the scene to a close with Professor Maxwell greeting the police and giving them his statement, right? All right. Seemed cool. like some sort of demonic possession. I will tout my credentials as a folklorist. Yes, and in <laughs> fact, you get a backing from the AIS, right? Because mm -hmm. they finally show up. and They're there. Excellent. They're like spouting book knowledge about possession and giving you all the help that they can. And the cops will, oh, oh great. One of those. Excellent. We'll... I, I truly believe that the young lady was not in control of, of herself so much as being controlled. And let's let's say that it's, it's Greenhaw, uh, officers Greenhaw and Officer Mara, I believe. It was, we have them, yeah, Lisa Mara, down on regular folks, row 46 of our NPCs. And Greenhaw says, okay, uh, where's this demonic instrument? I'll look about, oh, bye. I don't know where it's got to. And Mara says, wait, 
Is it still out there threatening people? Perhaps it was destroyed in the battle. Mateo is a bad liar and he just remains quiet. So he'll just nod. And Tony's tried to extricate herself from this conversation, thinking her past experience with these two cops could only make it worse. Do you mention Tony clocking Tanaka Michiko? Or do you neglect to mention that? Yeah. I don't know. That seems like the hero. I I will mention that. uh, And of course, uh, uh, this young lady here was quick to uh, uh, to provide uh, assistance, and uh, she managed to restrain the young lady and end the problem. The cops recognize her. It was truly heroic. Tony blushes a little bit. Officer Mara says, "Well, you've been involved in a lot of scraps lately." Ask around. I didn't. I didn't instigate anything. I just tried to help people. Uh, it promise. is a high school. I'm willing to bet there are literally dozens of uh, videos of this particular incident. If you would care to review them, yeah, we'll we'll do that. And I f- feels like are, are we good with that? Is there any more you wanted from that scene? seems like you've helped to extricate Tony from any further involvement and perhaps lessened some of the consequences for Tanaka Michiko. Yeah, I hope so. I, I do feel she was a victim of this. Okay. Does anyone have anything before we bring this session to a close? Anything they wanted to do, like a tag scene or? Okay, cool. We have done two sessions of like done in one action. Possible. Nailing it. Ah. Good stuff. Okay, let's do our end of session questions. Each of you, please take a moment to reflect on how the events of the game went, what big changes happened, or seem to be on their way. Choose a teammate and then ask them one of the questions below. Who would like to go first? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I, I'll go first. Um, I. An obvious choice, uh, I would be going with Theo. And uh, like which question? I can't remember which one I did last time. I think I'm going to go with how did my actions this session affect the community? Hmm. I, I feel like the alien contingency that that Elsa is part of is is going to have some reactions to how you behaved this session. Uh, seems like they're they're probably all pretty traumatized by losing their home planet, and uh, it's a delicate balance between them respecting Blossom's space and them getting, you know, at least some catharsis from knowing that some part of their planet is still alive. So that's, uh, that's tricky. Uh, However, I am going to increase your trust. I think uh, they, they want to believe in you. They want to believe in the blossom. I'm glad she has a, a name that fits well with the. Yeah, it's pretty fun. 
Excellent. Did you, I'm sorry, did you modify trust or confidence? I did. Good. Yes. I got a, I got a text from my father. I apologize for, for like looking away for a bit. I apologize. Awesome. Thank you so much. Who's next? I can go next. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so bad at uh, official Mikado because when, when the thing is the first person who moves, loses, I always lose. Um, anyway, uh, I will ask uh, you, Maxwell, how did I affect the team this session? Ooh, I think that, um, A, I thought it was neat to see you kind of step into a, uh, into a combat that was well suited for you. The dice were not kind, but it was a really cool moment of kind of the rock star superhero getting out there. And you were definitely the face of the team in this encounter we had, because of course, Maxwell's just there as an old man. Um, but uh, it, it was kind of neat to see you in your glory up there doing things. That was sort of cool. So I think for the team, it was a, while it won't be for the press or the cops, I think for these students that saw it, it was a positive. That's um, true. I totally should have had a few of the classmates who hounded Miguel a little bit, be there to see Miguel being badass. Ah, hmm, missed opportunity. And I will shift, let's see, let's shift confidence up one. Excellent. Who'd like to be next? I think I'll go, I'll go ahead. All right, uh, I will. I will jump in and ask Blossom. Pretty obviously, uh, how did I affect you this session? Um, I think you you kind of gave Blossom something that she's been missing. Like, like she's definitely been able to like open up with like some of her darker aspects. You know, like the more kind of heavy things with Miguel and stuff. But they're kind of more, you know seeing a cute guy kind of things that she would class as being a bit more frivolous which you know still important to her but um yeah being able to have that kind of friendship and i think that's something that she's Already. definitely been missing for quite a while in her life since changing and i think she really appreciated that and felt like her response to that was like, she really instantly wanted to like, I need to do something to help in, in return. Cause yeah, I need to solidify this. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, I'm gonna go, uh, the, I'm, your confidence up one. I'm, uh, I don't even know what your confidence is at the moment. Zero right now. One now. Yeah. One more than before. <laughs> and then Tyler. All righty. Um, I suppose I'll ask uh, Sabine, how did I affect the team this session? And you being Maxwell, of course, because you were Maxwell. Didn't see session. much her, yeah. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I think, um, yeah, as, as, as we've had before, Maxwell coming into the situation and kind of taking charge. I mean, you took charge of that demon thingy. That was kind of awesome. I mean, a mild manner professor going and I think that affected, will affect the team in the future, at least when the others hear about this and I mean, Laura could saw it as well uh, in uh, creating more of a kind of respect and trust in Maxwell's abilities and uh, position to her and will hopefully lead the team to support Maxwell more than they will support her because I feel it might have been a bit lacking because Hearn is so practical, right? 
Um, awesome, thank you. And I think, hmm, I think, should I? I should push your trust up, but we'll roll over and give you an XP or a team. Right. And it will give Rich a heart. I'm sorry. It will. Now go back to zero. Do it an XP or a team. I think I'm going to take the, you know, I think I'm going to take the team. Team's hard to come by. It can be. Excellent. All right, let's move to our feedback. We will start with wishes so we can end with stars. Who would like to kick off our wishes? Um, I want the uh, whole worshiping thing to escalate and become a, an issue. I'm definitely down with that. Quick question here. Blas was still staying with Miguel, right? Oh, yeah. Just, I want. It, I want this. To, I want it to get a problem for everyone. That's fine. I love that. Um, also, my other thing is, I def, I want to see. Uh, I want Blossom to meet Neutron Fist in a work setting. Can you help me understand what you mean by work setting? Doing super stuff. Okay. In costume with things to smash. That sounds fun. Thank you, Alex. Who's next? For wishes. Go next. I would wish that we could continue some of the threads we started out. Like uh, with uh, Dr. Null, maybe, or uh, with what happened with Tim Fair, stuff like that. And I mean, I've, I know we've concluded the whole um, situation with so super by now, but uh, I think there are still some, at, at mm -hmm. least the Dr. Null thing, I think we, we wanted to, to catch up on that. So, okay. Yes. I also like the idea of kind of looping back on certain threats, you know. Villain that we defeated. Ah, oh, I must get my revenge now. Even if it's like swatted away again, <laughs> super easily next second time. Just that you know, that feeling that people don't just disappear once they've. You, know. you bet. I am looking forward to that as well. Thank you, Sabine, Tyler, or Jen. Hmm. Yes, I, I too wish for more alien hijinks. Uh, I'd also like to see some some Atlantean stuff heat up. I think that could be pretty exciting. Yes, uh, I wish for Atlantean mafia stuff next session, and. Yes. I have a question for the group before, sorry, Tyler, but this dovetails off of the thing Jen just wished for. Are you guys cool with like an arc where you leave Earth for space adventure stuff? Okay. Yeah. Good. Sounds, sounds Good. like fun. I just want to make sure that that's a checkoff. Like, I saw that as a checkoff's gun. You can't have aliens come and be part of our triumvirate without there being alien shit going on off of Earth. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page, that this doesn't become a roaming around space game, but just like the X-Men dealing with cosmic stuff or the Avengers or all that stuff, that I want to make sure you guys were cool with it. And it sounds like yes, so yay. Any other wishes, Jen? No, I think I'm good. Thank you. Tyler. Um, well, we're already throwing so many things on your plate, but you you can't just give me the princess's pizza palace and then just leave it sitting there. I have very, 
very curious about that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of was under the impression that that tied in with Dr. Null, but uh, maybe I'm totally wrong, but uh, yeah. Um, that seems fascinating. Um, Good. I'm glad that, you think so. That's one wish. Um, and I like supernatural threats and wouldn't mind seeing Ars get involved as a, a periphery group every once in a while as well. Now, in my head canon, like my default assumption is that they're a little like lone gunman from X Files. Is that where you're at with it, or do you have a more? I'm thinking about them like ghost hunters or paranormal investigations. Okay. Oh, that or... sounds fun. Yeah, they're they're much more like that. <laughs> Amateur ghost hunters. Oh, that's great. That that sounds great. Yeah, I had uh, Princess Pizza Palace like tucked away waiting for a particular moment but we'll just it'll happen really early on instead i'll just hard frame it to happen so that's cool cool good stuff all right let's circle back around tyler you went last with wishes do you have any stars you'd like to express oh this was fun it was good to see it a uh, different pair off i think we talked about seeing different pair offs and uh, mm -hmm. this was was a new one to see um i thought the whole angsty high school teen with their possessed guitar was a cool hook i thought it was just a, overall it was a neat fun thing um i'm always you know a huge fan of emotional stuff with theo and blossom uh, blossom is always a, a a real generator of the fields and so that was awesome um all right i enjoyed it first rate first rate Jen, any stars? Oh yeah, no, I uh, stars for for Oscuro socially maneuvering uh, things around Blossom to try and try and help improve his friend's life. And that's that's very kind. Um, I enjoyed seeing Maxwell step up and and bring his professorial self into a conflict so wholeheartedly that was delightful I, yes i i agree i had a very like buffy watcher moment where the watcher like whips out some magic and badasses all around the place that mm -hmm. was fun mm -hmm. uh that was good um i liked i liked the skiro toughing it out and then turning it around with his sound sprites in the guitar battle uh that was that was quite good i oh the the portrait of rush limbaugh with the, the photograph with them together just wow a strong flavor that's what that had yeah so very good fun fun times all around indeed sabine what about you any stars sure um, lots of stars. This was a fun session. I liked uh, Blossom showing up at the beach, and I also liked uh, the the problem that Blue Art reached out to us. And I loved having a guitar battle, even though I did not technically succeed, but it was still fun. Um, so I got my wish. Thank you for that. And I like Maxwell just like uh, reasoning through. Oh, demon! Huh? What can I do here? Let me just banish it or something that was that was uh, pretty epic and i also loved the the um the duo theo and blossom and the whole problem with this little this little him <laughs> who you couldn't really punch but uh, 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 still didn't really want to have around and that poor uh dude with his uh supernova no it's different but the, the hands that yeah that poor guy hell that must not be fun that was really good i really loved it i'm glad he's nowhere near as sad as blossom and oscuro but he's he's down there in that quartile of <laughs> sad we didn't have another tab of the ranking of sadness <laughs> Yes, someone needs to make that happen. Um, Sadness rankings and and like you need to have a sad score, so we can we can just start mechanic. Jen, if you could just like work in a sad score just for those two characters, like custom move it. I don't know. You're good at I'll this. I'll see stuff. what I can do. I'll see what I can do. 
Uh, Alex, bring us home. Do you have any stars? Yeah, um, I mean, a lot of dittos. Um, I really like that. Um, I mean, we definitely had Maxwell be a useful character and, you know, a, lo- you know, a lovable character and stuff. But I really like this, this session we had, like, because he brought in his, you know, the paranormal investigator thing. He brought in, like, the kind of, he's kind of cool. <laughs> he's, he's, especially, like, when, you know, authorities came and he was, like, throwing out around his, you know, Atlant- Atlantic Research Society, the enigmatic kind of credentials or, or whatever that persona was. Oh, that was really cool. Um, He's a trustworthy yeah. citizen. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. It's very true. Very, very true. Who can, you know, battle demons with the best of them? I mean, I think, like it was said in the chat, um, you know, I don't think, I think just being part of a guitar battle, everyone wins. Win or lose, everyone wins. I bet. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed my scenes with uh, Theo. Just, you know, the, like we said, you know, the changing up the pairings. It's, you know, I really enjoyed that. Definitely paid off. And I thought, like, so much uh, a wealth of um, possibilities from that um, intro scene that you gave me to play with. Like, just so many things in a short space of time. Um, All of them I want to explore. Good. Good, good, good. Excellent. Well, quite enjoyed. And I think, and I think somebody with those those hands, I think they might actually win in the sadness because, you know, eradicating anything you touch, that feels uh, pretty high on the, you know. I mean, if you can't even read, eat food, that is kind of, yeah. yeah, that is kind of rough. Yeah. Yeah, there's some rough, rough stuff. And there's the, and the yeah. I mean I, Blossom was super not gonna delve into why he doesn't have a nurse anymore, but that felt like a story that was very, very, very sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I liked the juxtaposition. Mm. Good. Good. I'm glad I have uh, another juxtaposition that probably won't happen for a few sessions, but I'm really interested in seeing how that plays out. Uh, not that I planned super far ahead, but there's definitely a lot that I have on my plate from wishes and stuff that I need to pay off and circle back to before I start introducing any more new stuff and cowgirl. And cowgirl has to show up because she just demands playing as an NPC. And you guys have to live with it. Sorry. We can't wait. Using my bully pulpit as as MC to say cowgirl shows up. And at some point we may flash back to insane cow posse. Because holy crap, how can you make that name and it not show up? Brilliant. Clearly there Brilliant needs work. to to be previous Shinnok fighting insane cow posse. Exactly. Exactly. Was Zaychik uh, giving side commentary about Insane Cow Posse or something like that? That sounds good. Well, thank you all so much for playing. It is always a good time with the iGoa. And thanks, everybody, for watching. We will bring this recording to a close.